Joe knows taxes. Joe knows the market. Joe knows social security. Joe knows income planning. Joe knows pickleball? No. This is Joe Knows Retirement. You have a plan or a portfolio is what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Joe Knows Retirement. Too many times we see people who come and see us who just have a portfolio. What is a portfolio? It's this and that. It's investments in stocks, bonds, annuities, treasuries, CDs, bank accounts. But there's no plan behind it. There's no plan of how all this stuff is going to work together. And so do you have a plan or do you have a portfolio is what we're going to discuss today. And so let's first start off with this portfolio idea. So how does that happen? Well, having a portfolio simply, simply happens by working with you know, either your DIY and do it yourself or you're working with an advisor who maybe doesn't specialize in financial planning. Maybe they just do investment management or maybe you're working with an insurance only advisor where they're just selling your products and they're not building out a plan. So we see a lot of these types of people. Uh, for example, we had one client. Uh, they're now a client of ours. They had 11 different types of annuities and they had no other types of investments besides these annuities. So not only did they have almost 100% of their money in an annuity, but they also had uh, you know, annuities that maybe were not best for them is, is kind of the idea. So uh, we want to make sure we have more of a plan and not just have products. We want to have a plan that's working for us so that we can enjoy that retirement that we're working for. So what does it mean to have a plan? Well, the first thing we look about when having a plan versus a portfolio is first is tax planning. We're not going to spend a lot of time on tax planning on today's podcast, but just making sure we know which investments to pull out of and what the tax consequence is going to do, be to do that. If we pull out of our IRA, we've got to pay taxes on that. If we pull out of our Roth, that's tax-free. Do we have that flexibility to decide which one to take out from and decide where our tax situation is in order to determine which one is going to be more advantageous to take out of? For example, there's something called the Social Security Tax Torpedo. If you take out money during the Social Security tax torpedo, you could be paying a 20 or a, sorry, a 40 to 50% tax just on that money. We just had a client recently, if they took out 20,000 extra dollars from their IRA, they would have to pay 40% tax on that $20,000. That means Uncle Sam would get $8,000 of that and they would be only able to keep 12,000. I don't think that's necessarily what they'd want to do, right? So we have to understand those types of consequences if we just take, you know, just go to our investments and pull out money. What is going to be the consequence of that, right? The other part of having a, a good plan is understanding how Social Security is going to work with this portfolio that you do have. And so Social Security is going to account for half your income. Where are we going to get the rest of that income from all these investments that we've saved all these years to supplement that gap there is ultimately our next question. And then the third thing we have to be aware of is what we call market volatility, which is what we're going to talk about a lot during this plan and making sure that we have a structured investment plan that is protected, safe, and secure. So if the market goes down during retirement, we've got a plan to get us through it and not just a portfolio that's just sitting there. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here next. So the, the main thing to understand with market volatility is, first off, what is market volatility? Well, that's when the market goes down, right? That's when uh, 2008 happens and, you know, you lose money in your investment there. And, you know, 2008, the market was down 50, 60 percent. If you retire during that time, we often joke, but it's not really a joke, is that you probably were going back to work if you were not structured the right way. Um, from an investment standpoint. And some of you may remember that time in 2008 and how, how bad that could be. And so what we typically try to advise our clients is, hey, as you get closer to retirement, we may want to get more conservative, not more aggressive. And I think about it as a having a tape measure. So let's say we have a 90-inch tape measure. And let's say that 90 stands for your life expectancy. Let's say you're expected to live till 90. Well, if you're 25 years old, you probably are not worried if the market goes down. You're actually probably seeing that as an opportunity as saying, hey, now I can invest more money when the market's down and then I can get all of this growth coming back and you've got the time to make it up. Well, if you're 60 or 65 years old and you're just retired or you're getting ready to retire, well, if the market goes down at that point, do you have enough time to make it up knowing that the life expectancy and where you're at is now not as far? And so that's what we have to look at is, hey, are we worried about running out of money in retirement? Well, we probably don't want any huge risks like market risk to have that be a factor there. And so we see a lot of people that come to us with these portfolios just have typical stocks and bond portfolios. I think that's what most advisors suggest. And I think it's just a traditional way of doing it. 
But what people don't understand with that is in 2022, the market was down about 20%. Stocks were down about 20%, whereas bonds, which are supposed to be protected, were down about 15%. And so if you had a portfolio of 60, 40 stocks to bonds, which, you know, most retirees would say is, is adequate or most advisors say is adequate, you're going to lose about 16, 17, 18 percent there. And that's, you know, is that supposed to be a good thing as you take out money in retirement? And so we have to understand that, you know, maybe we don't want to have that kind of risk. And so the way we think about this concept, we call it a double loss concept. And that's when when the market goes down, that's one loss. And like I said, when you're 25 years old, that may not bother you as much. But when you're 65 and the market goes down and you're now retired, you no longer have income coming in. You now have to create your own income. And so if the market goes down and you take out money, that's what I would call a double loss. And then you have to ask, do you have enough to make up from that double loss? Yes, you may have enough to make up from that one loss, but what about that double loss? And especially since you don't have as much time on your side. So that's why we wanna make sure that we have our investments protected, especially for the first uh, investments we're going to need in the first 10 years of retirement. We call it our fragile decade. And what the fragile decade means that if the market goes down five years before you retire or five years after you retire, then you're going to put a lot of stress on your investments. And so we have to make sure that the money we take out from in that fragile decade is protected. Principal protected while still getting moderate growth is ultimately what we like to look at for a lot of our clients and so that we don't have to worry about what's called sequence of returns risk, which means retiring at the wrong time and that's when that double loss concept happens and when you're having to take a large amount out when the market's down early in your retirement, now you're not left which is with as much money. I mean, think about it. If you have, uh, let's say you have a million dollars and you want to take out $50,000 a year. Well, if the market goes down in half in 2008 and then you retire, you now only have $500,000. So what you thought was going to be a 5% withdrawal rate now turns into a 10% withdrawal rate. And if you're going to take out 10% a year from your retirement portfolio, it's not going to last very long. And so that's why we want to make sure that we're protected against this and preserving what we've, what we've accumulated up to this point here. And often people joke about that two, 2008. I think you'll like this joke. You know, my 401k turned into a 201k, right? And so we want to make sure we can prevent that from happening. And what we're seeing right now is, hey, you know, the market's been very rocky recently, but we're among an all-time high. You know, we may be a little off the high right now, but we're in a good place. And you've also accumulated this for all this time. You've seen all that growth over these years. So maybe if you're even down a little bit right now, that's not a big deal when you look at grand scheme of things, right? When in doubt, zoom out. Well, maybe it's a really good time to start taking those chips off the table and start to get more protected. So maybe you don't have it protected yet, like a lot of people we see, and that's totally fine. But now may be the time to do it before, you know, maybe a potential recession comes or something else happens to where our economy is hurting. And, and now we don't have to worry about it because we have more protection with our investments. So that would be the concept that would I like to, to drive home there. Another example with this planner portfolio that we like to drive home is just understanding where you're at right now. And so we like to think of it, we like to use this football analogy and uh, just to kind of understand like where are you at right now and where do you want to be? And so a lot of people, you know, are like this football analogy where, hey, you're, you're winning the game right now. You're up 10 points and you're on the 25 yard line and it's first and 10. You have the ball and there's five minutes left to go in the game. If, if you're the football coach, are you going to throw a Hail Mary or are you going to run the ball? And if you're going to throw the Hail Mary, then you're probably just trying to run up the score and you're just trying to probably build some bigger barns there, right? Versus if you run the ball, you're probably saying, I just want to win this game and I don't want to risk it. Because if I throw the Hail Mary, I could risk losing the game. They could intercept it. You know, something could happen where now they can have an opportunity to come back and, and beat us here. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to win the game or are you trying to build the biggest barn? So let's think about that from your investments. Are you just trying to avoid running out of money? making sure that you have enough in retirement, making sure that you can do everything that you want in retirement, go on those trips, spend time with the uh, grandkids, not have to go back to work, you know, be able to get what you want from the store and not have to be super, super frugal every time you go into the store, right? If that's your goal, then do we need 10, 20, 30% returns every year? Because if we want higher returns, what do we have to do? We have to take more risk. And is that something that we want to do at this point of our life? Remember that tape measure analogy. Are we early in that tape measure or are we later in that tape measure? And if so, that's probably going to dictate how much risk we want to take. And also, it's going to depend on how much income are you going to need to take 
from your investments? How many withdrawals are we going to have to take there? So I like that football analogy because if you want to just try to get the most growth over time, then keep keep money in the stock market. Keep it growing, right? That, that would be the best thing to do from a long-term perspective. But if you're really trying to make sure you just have enough and avoid risks and concerns, maybe we try to take some, some return off the table in order to get more protection and more secure returns over time is ultimately the idea. And, and the last analogy I'll use here is the mountain analogy. I mean, that's one of the reasons our firm name is Peak Retirement Planning is because we help people get down the mountain. We specialize in helping people between the ages of 55 and 70 who are in or near retirement who have done a good job of saving over the years to make sure that they understand the complexities of coming down this retirement mountain. Going up the mountain is not necessarily easy, but it's very simple. And it's just basically save, 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 and all you're thinking is grow, grow, grow. And a lot of the people we work with have done a tremendously good job on the accumulation side. But they come to us because they're thinking, what am I going to miss coming down? Because now I see there's a lot more complexities. I need to make sure I have an estate plan in place. I need to make sure I take Medicare at the right age. I need to understand the best time to take Social Security. I want to make sure I don't pay more in taxes over retirement. I know I need to take a different investment approach as we've talked about today. I know I now need an, a structured income plan now that I can't rely on my income that's coming in from my work anymore, and I don't know how to do that. Those are the type of people that work with us because that's our specialty. Our specialty is helping people with all of those complexities only in retirement. So we're not going to specialize in helping someone on the accumulation phase as much as we're going to help someone on the distribution phase because that's what we do every day. We plan retirements every single day. So that's the idea we want to think about when we think about this plan or portfolio. Again, having a portfolio is not necessarily bad. It's especially not bad on the accumulation side. I mean, that's all you really need on the accumulation side is a portfolio. Just save, save, save as much as you can. Just sock it away, sock it away, sock it away. But now it starts to become important to have a plan because now you're needing to withdraw money and now you can't avoid to have any mistakes of the market going down and, and, I, and things like that. So that's the whole idea of the planner portfolio. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, this video here today, this, this podcast. And uh, ultimately, the question I just have for you here as, as I leave you is, do you have a portfolio or do you have a plan? And if you only have a portfolio, make sure you get a plan so you can live that retirement that you deserve. Since we do not know your specific situation, none of this information can serve as tax, legal, insurance, or financial advice and may be outdated or inaccurate. The information comes from sources believed to be reliable but cannot be guaranteed. This content is prepared for educational purposes only. If you need advice, please contact a qualified CPA, attorney, insurance agent, financial advisor, or the appropriate professional for the subject you would like help with. Peak Retirement Planning, Inc. is an Ohio-based registered investment advisor and able to offer advisory services in Ohio and in other states where registered or exempt from registration.